My name is John, and uh, I'm a software developer for uh, Partitia in Aarhus. And uh, I'm going to be talking about some pitfalls in Partitia blockchain MPC, or rather why these pitfalls exist. So uh, where Christian was a very high level and how we solve the world with, uh, with multi-party computation, and Anas was very theoretical, I'm going to be a lot more practical and actually look at uh, some code and how you can program using MPC. So I'm going to cover the secure multi-party computation architecture. I'm uh, going to cover some serial knowledge contracts and our programming language for programming these contracts. I'm going to look at the compiler that does some of this, including what, how, uh, how it actually transforms secret branching and uh, the operations upon secrets. I'm going to talk about uh, very shortly about how you can uh, optimize some of your programs, and then I'm going to talk about wh what we're going to do in the future and how we can uh, improve the performance of these contracts. So when I'm going to, if I say set K or zero knowledge in this, uh, I'm meaning multi-party computation. These two terms are going to be uh, interchangeable for this presentation, at least. So secure multi-party computation is sort of a new architecture. Uh, the protocol technique, multi-party computation, secure multi-party computation, have existed for around 50 years. And this has been a theoretical framework for how you can actually operate upon secrets or uh, upon uh, information without revealing secrets to any party, even those who are operating upon it. So it works by secret sharing information, and uh, it can run any finite computation. Uh, emphasis upon the finite part and on the any part. Um, so we'll look more at what this means later on. Partitia blockchain is now turning the, the protocol into an actual architecture. So it's possible for anybody to actually come in and program uh, a smart contract and use these multi-party computation uh, techniques uh, just by creating a contract and actually uh, uploading it to our blockchain. So this is a new type of computer architecture, sort of like uh, your CPU, your GPU, uh, smart contracts in general. So it's on-demand cloud computing. You can request any, uh, you can request any number of multi-party computation nodes to perform your computation for you. It's synchronized networking, and this is an, another important part. It's a bit slow. Uh, because we actually need to send messages between all of the nodes. It's circuit-based, so basically it's just finite computation. You need to uh, transform your program into a sort of uh, linear program. We'll look at this in more detail later. The, the reason why we are uh, actually paying the costs of synchronized networking and circuit-based or finite computations is that all data is confidential. This is the cost in order to actually be able to do this, in order to uh, perform computations on secret data. And secure multi-party computations prevents any program from actually cheating with respect to this confidentiality. Uh, we'll look at this in more detail. So, okay. <laughs> As a, uh, as a simple example, let's, uh, oh, yeah. So, secure multi-party computation sends messages for any non-trivial operation. So this means, in our case, even an AND. Uh, we only support binary operations at the moment, so we need to re-implement uh, addition, we need to re-implement subtraction, multiplication, and so on. So for every single and operation. So you know you have one bit, you have two bits and you need to add them together. Uh, we actually need to send n squared minus n. So this is a little technical, but basically every node that is operating on this computation needs to send a bit to every other node. And uh, this uh, for four nodes, which is the default currently, 
we need to send 12 messages. So for an addition operation, so you are just adding two numbers together, that's 64 ands, that's 700 and some messages. That's a lot of messages. And for multiplication, that's even more additions, even more ands, even more messages. It becomes slow very fast. So, okay. So looking at how we structure uh, zero knowledge contracts, we first need to look at how we structure public contracts. So we have a public part where uh, people can send information. So if the public contract runs, wasn't bytecode, compiled from Rust, it, uh, it runs this on the BP, uh, block producer nodes. So this is the public part of the blockchain. It's synchronized or uh, yeah, state synchronized by the blockchain. The secret computation uh, makes this a whole lot more complex. So in order to actually be, uh, be able to, uh, sorry, the secret computation then runs upon three plus three T plus one. So basically it's four or you can have even more if you want uh, more security. Um, all of these nodes runs Rust ZK bytecode, so this is our own bytecode that they're running. This bytecode is a two-level interpreter, so first it performs some public computation, then some, it pe actually performs the secret computation. And this is uh, orchestrated by the public contract. So uh, every, every time you add an input, you need to go through the public contract and then into the secret contract. So our Rust ZK language, which uh, you are able to program this bytecode from, is based upon information flow control. So this is, <laughs> this is basically you have uh, several security label levels. For example, if you are uh, the FBI or something, you have several security labels and you give each individual person a permission to view some amount of confidential uh, information. So some people can only see the public information, some can only see the confidential and the public information, and some can see everything. We are only using the top secret and the public knowledge uh, levels for our language. So here you can see a, a simple snippet and uh, the type system that we use. So you can at any point take some, uh, you can at any point assign some public information to a secret. You can at any point take some public information and mix it with a secret so you can perform computations between public and secret. And you can assign, but you cannot, you cannot assign from a secret to a public variable. That's not allowed. And that's the basis of uh, information, control, information flow control. Okay, the two-level virtual machine is what actually, um, if you remember from here, we, we had this two-level uh, computation. It starts, so here we have some simple code. It's a sum operation. We are basically just loading all the variables, summing them together, returning them. Um, this is transformed by the first level, the public level of a virtual machine into this program, which is a linear program, notice. It's limited and, um, and it runs from start to finish. There's no loops at all. Um, yeah, so uh, this is what is actually executed in multi-party computation. Because remember, multi-party computation is, uh, is finite. And uh, this transformation is enforced by the secure multi-party computation engine. We could not cheat using this. We could not say, okay, I'm gonna loop over, I'm gonna loop from one secret to another secret. That's not allowed. Uh, even if we compiled it, even if the compiler accepted it, uh, the, the, the computation would not run. Okay, so uh, the compiler performs 
or supports a significant part of the rust, uh, but it performs, it makes one very important uh, distinction from the normal Rust compiler in that it uh, performs select transformation. So if you have some program like this where you are, you are computing based upon a secret, so you're saying, okay, if this secret is true, then we are going to perform this computation. If this secret is false, we are going to perform this computation. Uh, that's transformed by the compiler into a, another case where we perform both computations and then we are selecting upon it. And that's again because we can't really branch in, uh, in a secure multi-party computation. We need to transform it into a finite uh, program. And this makes public branching very cheap and secret branching very expensive. So you can see uh, this example where we are trying to av avoid performing a very expensive computation based upon the secret. But we can't really do this. The compiler is, must transform this code into this code where the computation is always performed. Whereas in public or classical computations, uh, programs running on your machine would either take the time to, to either uh, compute the condition and then, the el and then or the condition and the else. In that way, we can uh, bypass certain uh, computations. We can't do this uh, during secure multi-party computation. So you need this is very important when, uh, when programming, you need to consider the fact that uh, this transformation is being uh, performed. So when it comes to optimizations, you need to think back to the 80s. Every bit counts and every operation counts. Re reduce bit size, reduce operation counts. Uh, currently, we are only supporting big bitwise operations which makes them very fast. So uh, and, ors, xors, and so on are very fast. Arithmetic operations like and and multiplication, as you saw, are, are sort of slow. Uh, in the future, we are working to actually make both of them fast. Uh, that's possible. So what you, uh, what you really need to think about is how you construct your threat model when programming this. So you need to consider what must be secret. What inputs must be secret? What must be stored in a secret state? What can be made public? The less you make secrets, the faster your program is going to run. So yeah. Um, so this is the example from uh, Anas' uh, case again. It's an uh, average salary contract, this time with actual code. We're summing, we're dividing. Uh, the division is very expensive, um, so we can, again, uh, avoid doing the division in the secret part and uh, just do it in the public part of the contract. Yeah, okay, so uh, this, is, uh, this is all of what we have currently. We are, uh, we are constantly improving the language, so more Rust. Uh, make it better, easier to actually share code between projects. We are moving into a batch computation, so this is going to make all of uh, the computations faster and faster. And we are uh, going to add arithmetic data types at some point, uh, which will allow us to uh, be as fast on arithmetic types as we are on binary types. It's, it's going to be slow to convert between these data types but that's uh, cri uh, crypto uh, stuff uh, in order to explain why, why it's difficult to do that. Okay, so in conclusion, multi-party computation is a new sort of architecture. The compiler makes certain conveniences that can double as uh, inconveniences um, allowing you to write an inefficient code. 
And then again, you get, you get confidentiality in a way that you couldn't have previous. And this is, uh, this is why we are paying these costs, why, uh, why we want to program in this, even though there's a lot of difficulties. More improvements will uh, be made with more capabilities and efficiency at some point. Thank you.